today on Real Talk. Friendships can be among the most rewarding and most frustrating relationships in our lives. You choose your friends, not your family. And in many ways, the people we bring into our lives intentionally can mean just as much, if not more. The question is, how do you know if you are choosing the right friends? Can a real friend hurt you? When is a friendship over? Why do I feel unsure about this friendship? Are there really seasonal friendships? Can a friend cross the line? Pastor Liz and the Real Talk team address these and many other questions that will help you understand the true meaning of friendship. According to the Bible, true friendship is characterized by love. The Proverbs, the example of Jonathan and David, instructions to the church, and ultimately, Jesus' example depict true friendship. A true friend loves, gives wise counsel, remains loyal, forgives, and promotes the other's welfare. Biblical truths about friendship, right now on Real Talk. afternoon and welcome to real talk a program by women for women because of women we are so so blessed to be able to connect with you here today we actually had um we had a different plan uh but weather didn't permit for us to go through with that plan so we are changing it up a little bit here we are recording we're actually coming live from home. With me, I have our friends, uh, Miss Janet and Claudia. Miss Claudia, they are also uh, connecting with us from home. Hi, ladies. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good, thank you. Good, We're good. good. <laughs> Listen, before we get into the word here today, we have a very um, interesting word here to share with all of us here today. But I want you to go ahead and I want you to click that share button uh, right there where you are because I want you to interact with us. I wanna be able to read your comments and get you involved in this talk that we're gonna have here today. We're talking about friendship, ladies. We were talking, uh, we were texting last night a little bit and we were going over uh, a little while ago some of the friendships. Friendships are everywhere. Friendships are everywhere. And um, we were talking about how we were not created to be an island. We're not created to be alone. We are created to be, so, we are social beings. You know, we need that connection. We need that friendship, you know, friendships. You know, I just want to read a scripture uh, from Proverbs 18.1. It says like this, he who willfully separates himself from God and man seeks his own desire. He quarrels against all sound wisdom. And I love this scripture here because, ladies, it, it kind of breaks it down for us, the importance of being surrounded by right people, by by not being alone, because when we are often when we are alone, uh, we're not hearing that sound uh, words. We're not hearing words of wisdom sometimes when we need it, or we're not hearing, uh, you know, advice that we need. And uh, and the devil really runs with that so-called solitude as well. You know, he can really mm -hmm. take advantage of that. Uh, and we know from Scripture that when God created. Um, when God created 
man uh, that he said it is not good. It is not good that man be alone. And then he went forward and he created a woman. So I believe, ladies, uh, that that also falls into the category of, of friendships. What do, you, what do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think that the, the word of God says a couple of things. Do not forsake the gathering of the brethren, right? It talks about how right. iron sharpens iron, meaning we can't sharpen our own selves. We rely on having godly friends around us in order to motivate us at times, especially when we're down. Uh, I mean, often when we're going through something difficult, you can be talking about it with a friend and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit reveals mm -hmm. to you through that friend, okay, this is how you cope with it or this is why maybe you're going through this season. So I think it's we weren't made to be on the island, like you said, right? We were made for fellowship. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think... I think um, what Miss Claudia said is so true because I mean, after if you're married, then you could talk to your husband. But after your husband, if your husband is not around and if it's a friend that's gonna come and you could sit and talk with her and have a cup of coffee and you know talk about the stuff that is really pressing on you. And as Miss Claudia said, iron sharpened iron. The Bible said it's in Proverbs twenty seven seventeen. It says iron sharpened iron, so the man influence another through his thoughts, through his words, through what you're saying, through what you could relate back to me. So I think friendship is a must. True friendship is a must. True friendships. You know, there's something uh, that was actually stated on the uh, intro video uh, that was created. Uh, you don't choose, you don't get to choose your family, mm -hmm. but you do choose your friends. And the Bible talks about that. The Bible talks about the importance of choosing your friends because who becomes your friends is really of your choice, right? Yes, it is. It's really yes, it of is. your yeah, choice. Yeah, and I, and, and it, because your friends become an extension of your family, right? A, a true friend becomes an extension of your family. And I think that's so that's such a powerful statement because maybe someone who's hearing us right now is stuck in a friendship that they know is unhealthy, but you can only stay stuck in that friendship as long as you determine that you want to be stuck in it. The same way that you also have uh, the right to choose who you want to have has part of your life. And, and you can't do that with family. Family you're born with and that's it. You're stuck with what you have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is so true. You know, I we, we were even joking. Uh, we were joking a little bit earlier. We said uh, last night when we were sending texts about coming up with uh, different examples, biblical examples of, of friendships, we we actually realized that we didn't come up with any friendships that were that were females it was all male mm -hmm. uh friendships and uh why do you think that is do you think women are just they're, they're, they're just more <laughs> catty they're just more complicated i mean why is it why is it that we only came up with the male friendships i mean I think there's a, a lot know. of women uh, <laughs> friendships in the word of God. It's just, I, I think we tended to focus more on the New Testament. <laughs> yeah. 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 Listen, we came up with, um, you know, uh, three, well, actually a little bit more than three um, examples. You know, if you're taking notes, you can take down note the scripture here of First Samuel 18, where it talks about a friendship. It talks about David and Jonathan, you know, in, in this friendship of David and Jonathan, we see, uh, we see one thing that really David and Jonathan's friendship is loyalty, the loyalty that they shared mm -hmm. that even went way beyond life. Uh, we know from reading scripture, 
that they made a pact. They made a promise. And after Jonathan had died in battle, years after when David was already king, um, there was something that happened where David's loyalty to his friendship with Jonathan showed up again years after Jonathan was already gone with uh, his son Mephibosheth, where David brought him into the palace and treated him from that point on as the son of David. You know, when we talk about friendships nowadays, um, we see that it's very, very uncommon almost, we can say, to see loyalty in friendships. So you see, sometimes people are in friendships, ladies, for what they can get out of that friendship. And we see that a lot today. We see that a lot, especially among women. But you see here in Jonathan, in David's uh, friendship, you see that that loyalty that they had, it was to see the better of the other more than to mm -hmm. see the better of self. And I think that that's something that's and, really, really lacking in a lot of friendships uh, today. In, you know, when they started their friendship, it was during a time that neither one could have done really much for each other. You know, and I think that's important yeah. to know. I mean, David wasn't king. Uh, Jonathan, you know, he was the son of the king, but he was treated like uh, just any other warrior in the kingdom. So I think that gave them the foundation because they, they really must have invested in the time to really get to know who each one was. You know, the, yeah. and, and they were loyal. I mean, they were both loyal to the end. And uh, David's loyalty, I, I think that's so amazing because David's loyalty continued way long after, you know, Jonathan was gone. You know, he extended that loyalty. And, and it, I don't think it was only loyalty. It was the love, the love that he had for Jonathan. He extended it to his family. Yeah, and I, I think the loyalty is key, but I think apart from loyalty is that, as you said, they extended it. They had to grow, they had to communicate, they had to have mm -hmm. something going on with each other all these years mm -hmm. that make, it's like the glue that bond them together, that even though he was no longer around and you know he passed, you know, I could do something for his son. So that's where I think sometimes we're lacking in the body of Christ or as friends today where we, we lose the glue. Mm. Where is the glue? The loyalty is yeah. there when things are nice, when everything is going good, mm. once things is not going the right way, or, or I cannot anymore get anything from you anymore. We drop it, we walk away. We need to keep the glue thick. We need to keep yeah. the glue because it's the glue, you know, and it's reciprocity. You give in to me, I give in to you. I think the loyalty came about because they were both given into each other. They were both giving themselves yeah. to each other. So because they did that, that formed a bond and the bond was unbreakable even after his death. Yeah, yeah you know, Miss Janet, yeah. you know what, Miss Janet, we're living in a society mm -hmm. where it's all about self right yes we're living in a society in today's world where it's all about self it's all about what are my goals what are my dreams mm -hmm. where i want to mm -hmm. get to and that doesn't really leave much room for people that are really loyal right. because it's like you said it's all about what can i get and the, the moment that you stop becoming uh useful to me you know yeah. you're dropped yeah and that's what yeah, you see. Yeah. You see that you see that in the world, obviously, but you also mm -hmm. see it amongst Christians. And it's it's the days that we're living in, which are so it's it's a dis it must be like a huge disappointment to God. It really yes, must. It well, the, the scripture does tell us that in the last days, the love of many uh, would grow cold. Grow cold. Uh, within the church, that's within uh, marriages, mm -hmm. that's within friendships. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's just a general um, coldness of love, you know. Yeah, and, and but you know what, ladies, they'll though, be lovers of themselves. Absolutely, you know. And, yeah, and I think when, once themselves. you find a friend, see, I, I think also, um, I truly believe that a friendship um, 
like Janet said, a friendship is something that it grows. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. It's something that it matures. Mm -hmm. uh, you can honestly say, this is my friend when you've known this person. You know their ins and their outs. You know their strengths. You know their weaknesses. Uh, you've been mm -hmm. with them through their storms. Uh, they've helped you through it. You've helped them through it. Um, and I, I, when, when the friendship is mature, um, I think the, the, the love and the loyalty uh, and everything else that makes that friendship solid uh, is something that you can use as a mirror to other friendships that may come into your life. I, I agree. I and, so. and sometimes, and sometimes, um, especially in the days that we're living in, I, to me, what works for me is I have a very small group of friends and, and that works for me because it's not everybody that you really can um, let into your life, you know? Um, and it, it's just, we're living in very difficult days, you know? I, I think mentality has a Christian is you think that the more the merrier that you should be, you know, friends with everybody. I mean, you can be cordial with everybody. You can be kind to everyone, but it doesn't mean that, hey, I'm going to let you into my life and know everything that's going on inside my home. You know, there's only a selected few, you know, that, that I give that to because, you know, you have to use wisdom and you have to use discernment. Yeah. And that selective few is called your inner circle. Yes. It's that's only a it. few people that's in my inner circle. Just a few. Yeah. And that's why it's a circle because at some point mm -hmm. it's in. And it, yeah, it distinctly right. says inner circle. That <laughs> minister. No, a little dot. A little dot. I love middle, that. That's powerful, Miss yeah. Janet. Yeah. That's, yeah. And that's a, my right inner there. circle. Yeah. Inner and you know circle. what? That's and you know what, dot. Jan? Uh, we can't feel guilty. No. For having mm -hmm. that inner circle, because sometimes no. we, 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 we do have, we love everyone, but we don't necessarily like everyone. True. Uh, you know, so that inner circle for some people, it, mm -hmm. it can be bigger than for other people. But for most mm -hmm. people, that inner circle is, is, is created by two, three, four, maybe yeah. people, um, you know, what have you, everybody is different. But many times when you create that, you have that circle, it's not that a lot of people misinterpret that as favoritism or you no. have favoritism. It's not, it has nothing to do with favoritism. It just has to do with where you are in life, what season you're in in life, who helped mm -hmm. you get there, who, you know what I mean? Who, who was with you along the way because there mm -hmm. are friendships that that has been tested for over 15, 20 years, you know, and there are I'm friendships that are also seasonal mm -hmm. friendships. Yeah, you know, there yeah. are. I mean, there are all different types of of friendships. Mm -hmm. But when mm -hmm. it comes to that inner circle, like you said, Jan, when it comes to that inner circle, the less is more. Yes, it is. I agree. The less is yes, more. it is. Yes, it is. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. On every and on, on every level, because with an inner circle, if you have three people in your inner circle, and those three people are in your inner circle, you could easily talk to those three people one and one. If you have a wider group, you have twenty people. It's hard to communicate. I mean, if I'm in problem and I have three people in my inner circle, so I make the third. So two is advising me. I could easily take those two counsel and figure mm -hmm. out and with the help of the Holy Spirit what to do. But if you have 20 people mm -hmm. in your inner circle, how am I gonna be able to, when I'm going through a difficult time, when I'm having a hard time and everybody's speaking into my life, oh, do this, do this, because it's yeah. your inner circle. So they'll know exactly what's taking place. Right. And then everybody's speaking, it's gonna be confusing. you know. And there's a place in the Bible, I don't remember exactly where it tells you that you can't have too much friends, you're gonna end up, in destruction. Mm -hmm. there's, it corrupts a, there's a good verse character. in the Bible that, yeah, you can't yeah. have too much it friends. Corrupts so good character. It, there has to be an inner circle. There yeah. must be an inner circle. And and, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, Jen, we're talking about circles here, uh, friendship circles. Those who are, 
outside <clears throat> that circle sometimes can cause you, they, they, they'll throw that guilt trip on you mm. and that condemnation on you. Uh, why am I not in that inner circle? Or why am I not, you know, and, and what do you do when you're dealing with people who you respect, who you love as well, but you know that they're just not called to be in your inner circle, but they're trying to maybe push themselves into that inner circle. How do you deal with someone like that without mm. uh, offending or without, um, you know, making that person feel that they, they're not your friends? Because we see that a lot. You know, at least I do when I sit down and I talk to people, I see that there's a lot of women who are battling that thing and they, they, they feel like they're being pulled uh, from, from two sides. Mm. Uh, and they know that it, it is God that has, you know, has told them you, you need to separate yourself a little bit. But they feel, you know, um, they feel conflicted because the person who is outside of that circle is really pressuring that person to be part of that circle because it was mm. a time where they were in that inner circle, but time went by situations happened, and they person has realized that, you know, in reality, that was a seasonal friendship, but that person is not taking it as a seasonal friendship and that, and now mm. this person is feeling, you know, uh, like she's in the middle. Yeah, I, I, I mean, think in a, in a case like that. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ms. Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think the red flag for me, and I've been in that situation uh, more times than I probably would care to be in. Um, the red flag for me is that the minute that somebody starts to give you a guilt trip, that to me right there is the red flag. Like, okay, yeah, uh, that's just confirmation that this season is yeah. over. Because, I mean, life is complicated. You should have friends that add to your life, not people that are going to make you feel guilty because you don't call them all the time or you're not with them all the time. I, I have I have my small, tiny little circle. I have friends that, like, I have a, a, a close friend that I haven't spoken to probably in a few months. But I know that the minute that I pick up the phone and we start talking, it's like as if no time went by. Because that's what a mature person does. You know what I mean? We, right. we all have to have an understanding that we mm -hmm. have lives, that we have children, that we have families, that we have uh, church responsibilities. And we're not always able to be glued to our phone, you know, unfortunately, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's nice that when you do get the blessing and the opportunity to finally get in touch that you can just, you know, begin where you left off, which is great. I agree. So we have to, then we have to also uh, uh, come to a place where uh, we understand uh, that there will be those who, you know, will try to uh, make you feel guilty for what you know many times God has placed in you. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we have to be able to 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 show maturity when it comes to that as well, and and and, and allow God to do what we can't do when, yeah, when it comes to that situation. I, yeah, and I think not everybody is at a level spiritually that they can understand in depth your life. You know what I mean? There's certain aspects about me as a person, um, my faults my, okay, I have bad moods, that maybe someone is not prepared to, to understand. And it could be damaging to that person to be a yeah. part of that because they're not going to understand. You know, some people have this, this conception that this is how you're supposed to be all the time. This is as a woman of God. You're not supposed to have any bad days. You're not supposed to lose your patience. So what happens if I have somebody like that in my life where they catch me on a day that I'm not having a good day 
And instead mm -hmm. of them being like, hey, I had that day yesterday, they're going to be critical and Pretty judgmental funny. and make you yeah. feel guilty. Like you're not really the true woman of God that I thought you were because you're having a bad day. So I think the Holy Spirit is so amazing. I've, I've, I think we've made, has a group, we've had that experience where the Holy Spirit does show us you know, the people that we can have that relationship with and the people that we can't more so because it can be more damaging for them uh, if we have that close relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is called to be this. So that actually answers the question uh, that we had in the beginning of uh, in the intro where it says, you know, mm -hmm. could are there seasonal friendships? Absolutely. There are Absolutely. seasonal mm -hmm. friendships. There are friendships that, you know, they, they, they do come into our lives at a certain time in our lives uh, when we're facing certain things in our lives or when we're going through a certain thing in our life. In those friendships, uh, they're seasonal. They, they, they come at that season when they're supposed to be there. And when that season, uh, season is over, those friendships, it's not that you, uh, you disconnect completely, but you don't have that, that, that tightness, that, that, that oneness that you once had uh, during that season. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and we and have I, to be in a mature level that we say, you know what, um, this, this seasonal, uh, this season of my life is over and yeah. I need to be okay letting that season go. You see a lot of people, uh, uh, ladies, they, they have, they have an issue of letting people go because they feel like if they let certain people go out of their, their, you know, their so-called circle, um, uh, that they're not being Christian enough. They're not being loving yeah. enough. And uh, yeah. one thing has nothing to do with the other. You know, uh, okay. uh, faith is an emotion. Faith is faith. is faith. And when God is leading us to do something, we have to be okay obeying what God is telling us to do without the emotion that many times mm -hmm. can tag along with that decision that we're making, you know? Yeah, true faith is action. You need to put it into action. Once you realize that this is not working, then that's when you have to put it into action. Because faith is yeah. action. Amen. Faith is Amen. True action. Mm -hmm. So, Jan. Yeah, and Miss Janet. You're already yes, talking oh, over ahead. there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we were talking also, you brought up the friendship, actually, a, an awesome friendship. And that's found in Acts 16 of Paul and Timothy. We were talking a little bit before we went on about Paul and Timothy, you care to share what we were talking about? Yeah, um, I was looking at Timothy, you know, Paul and Timothy, first to begin with that they are at different ages. This is a, a older guy who is Paul and a younger guy who's Timothy. And they develop a friendship over the years because at first, I mean, Paul, Paul had, Paul knew Timothy family because in first Timothy it talks about his grandmother it, Louisa, it talks about his mom, you know, and it talks about the type of faith that his parents had or his family had. And um, Paul is telling Timothy, but, you know, I see the same kind of faith in you. You know, mm -hmm. I see the same fire, your life in you. So, and it goes on to say that he was the one who brought him into the ministry. He was the one who laid his hands on him and anointed him, you know, to do the work of God. And so the relationship began. But in 1 Timothy, and I'm going to read from 1 Timothy 2, it says to Timothy, my true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace in the faith. That mm. means they started the relationship as co-workers first. He said, my true son in the faith. But as they go along life journey, as you said, reciprocity, they were both given into each other's. You know, we talk about the loyalty that they had for each other because they were loyal to each other because Timothy was able to receive what Paul was telling him about mm -hmm. the churches, how to do the, the work of God, you know, how to minister to the people, how to correct a person when they are wrong without, you know, blowing his top, you know, how to be having a clear mind. And at the same time, he was able to take all this instruction from an older man telling him what to do, but he had to be teachable. So because yes. he was teachable, I think it helped the relationship to grow because when it goes over now, and I'm going to read a short little script again into 2 Timothy, 
it said to my beloved son again, and I'm gonna read from three. It says, I thank God who I worship and serve with a clear conscience the way my father did. As I constantly remember you in my prior. Now this is not a coworker because this is a friendship now. He said, I remember you in my prior and mm -hmm. pray for you night and day. It says, I recall your tears. That mean they had to share moments mm -hmm. of grief. Wow. They had to share mm -hmm. moments of sadness. Yes. They had to share moments of disbelief. What, what am I gonna do? Can you help me? You know, I need this. They had to share it. He said, I recall your tears. He says, I long to see you. This is a guy telling another guy, I long to see you. What a friendship. They yeah. formed a bond. It stepped from both of us being pastors, both of us being ministers, both of us, you know, probably having, well, he did, Timothy was married, both of us, you know, ministering to pe people. Now it said, it said, I long to see you that you may fill me with joy. Mm. Wow. His present, <laughs> yes, fill him with joy. That's true friendship. That's true friendship. That's, that's true that's, friendship. It's like, it's like Naomi and, and, and Ruth. She said, I'm not leaving you. Can yeah. you imagine telling a next person where you die, where I'll die, where you mm -hmm. go, I'll go. That's mm -hmm. true bond. And yeah. that's what we want to see in the body of Christ today. Yeah. But as I always says, it start with you. It yeah. doesn't start with the next yeah. person. Yeah, and, and, you, and before... you said something so powerful, Jen. You said that mm -hmm. Paul, uh, it started off as a mentoring relationship yes. right mm -hmm. paul mentored uh timothy mm -hmm. but timothy had a teachable heart yes spirit yes and i does. think that in a true relationship for anything to become a true relationship a, a true friendship uh better say uh there has to be that transparency where yes. i can tell you something without Loyalty. the fear mm -hmm. of you becoming offended or i can tell you something and know that you're going to you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna receive what I'm saying with your whole heart. You know, when you are in a friendship and you feel like you're you're walking on eggshells all the time, like you can't really mm -hmm. say what you want to say because mm -hmm. she she may get offended. Uh, uh, you can't really be yourself because uh, you know he will get offended or what have you. That that's that's not healthy. Not it's at not all. healthy, no. and we don't not see that with Paul and Timothy. We see complete transparency. Complete Whatever Paul transparency. had to tell Timothy, he mm -hmm. told Timothy. Whatever Timothy mm -hmm. had to tell Paul, he told Paul. Mm -hmm. And and, mm -hmm. and that, and I think that's the core of that yeah. strong friendship where you can be mm -hmm. you yeah. without yeah. feeling yeah. like yeah. you have to be yeah. somebody else. Because he said, because I saw I'm your not tears. Be accepted. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. They, they, saw, they were, because say, there was no pride. Kid. No. No, yeah, it, you can't, there you wasn't. know, pr the pride is, pride is a true destroyer of the best intentions. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have people that might have, that want to be close to you, that might be maybe a seasonal friend. But mm -hmm. the minute that pride steps in where you can't really be your true self, I mean, that's what it really comes down to, right? Uh, Timothy and Paul had that transparency. They could be their true selves when they were with each other without feeling that they were going to get judged, without feeling right. that they were going to be betrayed, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and they weren't prideful. They accepted it. I mean, to the point, like you said, Miss Janet, he, when he said, I saw your tears. I mean, imagine yeah. the level of trust that there was, you know, for to have that transparency with that friend, you know, yeah, um, yeah. it's amazing. Ladies, it is, listen, we're going to be, we're going to be right back. We're going to be right back with your program, Real Talk. And we're going to continue talking about this topic here. Friendships don't go away. We'll be right back. Today on Real Talk. Friendships can be among the most rewarding and most frustrating relationships in our lives. You choose your friends, not your family. And in many ways, the people we bring into our lives intentionally can mean just as much, if not more. The question is, how do you know if you are choosing the right friends? Can a real friend hurt you? 
When is a friendship over? Why do I feel unsure about this friendship? Are there really seasonal friendships? Can a friend cross the line? Pastor Liz and the Real Talk team address these and many other questions that will help you understand the true meaning of friendship. According to the Bible, true friendship is characterized by love. The Proverbs, the example of Jonathan and David, instructions to the church, and ultimately, Jesus' example depict true friendship. A true friend loves, gives wise counsel, remains loyal, forgives, and promotes the other's welfare. Biblical truths about friendship, right now on Real Talk.
your program Real Talk, a program by women for women because of women. So we are here today with our two friends talking about friendships. We're here talking about friendships. I just want to read a, a comment that someone left. She said, I was friends with a sister in Christ who was older than me. And at times I felt like I had to live up to her level, but I'm still growing in Christ. But when someone feels like they have arrived and you haven't, it's hard to be friends with that person. What do you, what do you ladies think about that? Mm. She, she was friends with someone who was older and felt like um, she had to, in a sense, live up or reach uh, where that person was and it didn't do her any good. Mm. I think because I mean, um, <laughs> that friend was probably not mature enough. <laughs> Claudia, we keep cutting each other's off. No, I you're, you're saying exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's not mature enough, so she didn't know how to nurture her. Because if she's older, that means she have a few more nuggets that she could probably pass on to this younger uh, sister in Christ. Mm -hmm. But then it comes down to maturity. Even though she's older, apparently she was not mature enough to say, okay, here is a, a tender plant that needs some watering, that needs some pruning, that needs some nurturing. And, you know, God has placed me in this position to become her friend or to befriend her so I could help her help her along the way. So I think it has to do with the person not being mature, the old little person. Mm -hmm. So age, I, uh, I, I, age doesn't necessarily equal maturity. No, it doesn't. No. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. I, I think it's great to, to see, uh, you know, admire someone who has certain strengths that, you know, we might be working on. But I think that the moment that there's expectations that are laid that, hey, you have to be at my level, uh, that's a huge lack of maturity. I mean, there's no godliness, yeah. in, in my opinion, in that, in that way of thinking. Because we're all, we all have different uh, gifts. We all have different talents. We all have mm -hmm. different personalities. And God created us to be unique, not to be a reproduction of anyone else. So if you if I think that anyone that's uh, in a friendship relationship where they feel that that friend is making you feel bad to a certain extent because you're not at their level. I mean, in all reality, what what level is that? You know, yeah. um, that's too high, too many. I think that's too complicated of a friendship for me personally to be in where people lay out those high expectations that it's not even uh, reasonable or that it's not even God's plan for you to even be at, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and someone, and someone even commented and they said, could it be also that in that case, it's a simple misunderstanding that could also be uh, the case as well. You know, it could be that uh, the one who is older, you know, tends to talk a certain way or tends to say something and, um, uh, the one who may be, you know, uh, younger may misinterpret what is being said as well, you know, and that's where, you know, communication comes in because you can't have a, a real yeah. solid friendship if you don't have that open communication. You know, whenever you're in a friendship and uh, something is going wrong or, you know, they said something that you didn't like or what have you, you should be able to open up and say, listen, um, can you, can you clarify that? Or can you, uh, we can't just also um, jump to conclusions, right? Uh, when something is, mm. is done or said, if we don't have that full clarity of, of the reason why. Yeah, ass assumptions can be deadly. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you, if you're, if you're truly friends, then there should be transparency. If there's no transparency and you can't even communicate, you know, how you feel or, you know, yeah. whether that person does have that type of expectation from you, then it's really not like a, a true friendship because there has to be a lot of transparency in a friendship. Yeah, because we were talking prior to the break, Jen, about uh, 
Timothy and Paul. You know, in, mm -hmm. in the case of Timothy mm -hmm. and Paul, it could have been a lot of misinterpretations as well that Timothy could have uh, received from Paul with that, you know, gap of an age that there yeah. was. But you yeah. see that there was always a mending going on. There was always a, uh, you know, an understanding going on. There was always Paul going down to Timothy's level. And at one time, Paul even teaching Timothy and saying, listen, don't let others look down at you because, because of, your, of age. your age. Because, yes. you know, you yeah. need to be able to, you know, step up a little mm -hmm. bit and, and, and mm -hmm. set mm -hmm. those, uh, set that standard. Standards. Yes. 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 You know, you want to yeah. you want to talk because we were talking about that, Jan. So you want to continue with that? Yeah. And, and he also, apart from that, he also spoke to Timothy in different levels. One of the levels that he spoke to Timothy about was and which really speaks to me. He said in Timothy 4, 2 Timothy 4, 5, he said, as but for you, he's talking to Timothy now. He said, be clear headed in every situation mm. stay calm and cool and steady endure every hardship without flinching now that is a huge plate to absorb he's telling him think before you act don't let everybody push you around calm headed don't be so hasty don't be so fiery you know what i'm saying he said stay calm stay cool he said, you must end your hardship now. From one friend to another, he's telling you, end your hardship. Most friends, no people don't want, nobody wants to go through hardship. Everybody wants smooth sailing, smooth, everything is humpty dumpty, no ups and down. But here, first you talk about, I've seen your tears. Now he's telling him, you need to endure. You need to have a level head. You need to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you know, he said, don't flinch. Don't hmm. think, don't worry about it. It says, do the work of an evangelist fully, fulfilling your duty in this ministry. So you see that they were still in the ministry, but they still form a bond in friendship. Yeah. And he's and telling he, and you, he was rooting him on. You know, yes, Paul was letting yes. Timothy know, yeah. listen, you're young. You can do it. But you can do yeah. it, man. You can do yes, it. You, you know, can, you have you what it takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you and can you, do it. And, and that's a true friendship. You know, uh, when you're able friendship. to root somebody on, listen. Courage. I'm telling you, a real woman will fix another woman's crown without letting anyone else know that the crown was that she fixed it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's and, a strong that's, statement right there. That's mm -hmm. that's friendship. You know, friendship is yeah. when you can see the flaws of mm -hmm. your friend and one on one work with that friend in helping mm -hmm. her out of that flaw or helping her through that season of her life and not mm -hmm. letting anybody else know that, you know, you were there to help her or she actually went through this. So, you know, and, and, and like we said in the beginning of the program, it's very, very difficult nowadays to really find that yeah. friendship. So when you find that friendship, you know, yeah, hold you have on to, to it. Cherish it. Yeah. You have to cherish it because it doesn't come lightly and it takes a time for it to, it's like a young tree. It mm -hmm. doesn't plant it today and then tomorrow you get the tomatoes. It takes a time for you to nurture it. So each friendship, I think, must be nurtured. Each friendship, I think, must have loyalty. Each friendship, I think, must have transparency in it for it to really grow fruits. And then, you know, if you do all of that, the nurturing, the transparency, the loyalty, you know, the honesty, the constant communication, speak your mind, say what you mean. If you don't understand it, you know, go over it again. And that's what is going to form the glue again, that bond to keep that friendship. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's all about being there for that other person other. And, and, and making Correct. yourself available for that other mm -hmm. person. You know, yesterday, mm -hmm. and as we were texting, we also spoke of the friendship, uh, Claudia, you brought up the friendship between Jesus and Lazarus in the Bible. You yeah, know, the Bible and says it, that, um, and it's, it talks about it. Yeah, and, and I kind of wish that there was more depth, uh, like, into their friendship, because it, it makes, it made me so curious as I was meditating uh, yesterday and John, uh, chapter 11 about the type of bond that Lazarus had with Jesus, where when his sisters um, sent word to Jesus that Lazarus was very sick, the first thing that they said is, Lord, the one you love is sick. 
the one mm -hmm. you love is sick. So imagine what type of bond that Jesus had with this man. I mean, Jesus had his disciples, right? He was close to some, um, and he was mentoring them, but there, there was a bond that he had with Lazarus to the point that um, when Lazarus died and Jesus comes a, little, a, few, a few verses uh, further on chapter 11, when Jesus gets to his grave site and he looks, Jesus, the Bible says that he wept. He, I mean, he knew yeah. he was going to resurrect him from, from death, but yet he wept. You know, he felt, mm -hmm. you know, the pain that Lazarus must have gone through. Uh, you know, it, it's just, I, I just wish the Bible would have talked more about that type of friendship that they had. Because it, it, there, there must have been a lot of transparency between the two of them. There must have been a lot of trust. Uh, I mean, Jesus was constantly stopping in Bethany at Lazarus's house, right? Because the Bible mentions it uh, quite a few times. Mm -hmm. so, so he felt at home. Yeah, Lazarus wasn't one of the 12, right? So so he was his friend. They had that relationship, but yet he wasn't one of the uh, disciples that were following Jesus every single day. And, so, that, and that's powerful what you that, just said. That, that's amazing. That's the, the one outside of the circle. But yeah. being okay with being yeah. outside of, of Jesus' circle. circle. Yeah. You don't he knew see Lazarus boundaries. trying to push himself mm -hmm. into he knew. that circle. Because when, listen, when mm -hmm. you are, there's all different levels of friendships. When you are friends with someone, you respect where that person has your friendship. And you and you mm -hmm. become, you, you stay friends despite of you, whether you are where you think you should be. Because sometimes your friend is going through something, right? But like we said in the beginning of the program, right. they're not in a place where they can really help you or they're not in a place where they can really hear what you're going through without feeling wrong in a way or feeling judgmental in a way. And that's why that there are different levels of friendships. Just because you have some in your circle that doesn't make those in the circle more important than those who are not in the circle. And we see that with Jesus. Jesus right. knew how to keep people in their place. And he never disrespected anyone who wasn't in a certain place. They all had their different levels in his life, in his ministry, in his walk. And he, he made time for all of them, yet he knew where, to, where each one needed to be. And you see that right now. When you talk about Lazarus, you know, being a friend of Jesus, but being that friend that was outside of Jesus's circle, but nevertheless a friend. Yeah, and, and I think and it's important for us to for really him. understand that. <laughs> that's right. He and he knew he was going to resurrect him, right? He knew yeah. that he was going to raise yeah. him from the dead, but yet mm -hmm. I think the shock of being at the gravesite and looking at the tomb. And knowing his friend was there and knowing that he went through the pain of death, right? He was sick. So he went through the pain that led him to to, to die. And, and he felt that impact. He wept. He wept. And, you know, I, I imagine Jesus ha was on a mission, right? He knew that he had to prepare the 12. He was focusing on mentoring them, on preparing them. They were all unique individuals. They were all different from one another. And he loved them, but there's a difference between, hey, this is my duty. I have to prepare them for their mission versus this is my friend who's outside of this group who I can have a friendship relationship with because the Bible doesn't talk that he was mentoring Lazarus or that he was preparing Lazarus. It just talks that they loved each other and that they were friends. And, you know, everybody needs someone like that. I think everyone needs someone, you know, there's a difference between people that you have to work with people that you have to have like a mentoring uh, relationship with. And, and Miss Janet mentioned, you know, Paul was Timothy's mentor but I think through the process, they had like a deep, um, not only friendship, but they had like this deep uh, relationship for each other. You know, they understood each other. Um, 
but it's it's it, I think it's important for us to always have someone outside of you know people that we have to work with or people that we have to mentor there is a difference and it becomes dangerous when the people that we god has entrusted us to mentor when they feel like they need more than that that they need a close intimate relationship because there is a difference between the two not everybody that we are walking alongside with that we are mentoring um is meant to have that close proximity into our personal lives yeah and we need to really um we need to really pray and ask god for guidance and wisdom when it comes to that because um uh absolutely there, there needs to be there needs to be boundaries there, there we we and we mm -hmm. are responsible for setting our own bond our own yes, boundaries yes, and you know are. uh when a certain friend crosses that line uh, we need to be able to sit down with that person and say, listen, you know, um, I set these boundaries up for me. It has nothing to do with you, but it's for me. Mm -hmm. It's for my mm -hmm. sanity. It, it's for my peace. It's for my well-being because I've been down this road before and it caused me pain. It caused me havoc. And I don't want to go down this road again. So because I went through so mm -hmm. much pain and hurt, I've learned how to set boundaries now. And, um, and and it's healthy to be able to set boundaries for yourself. You can't wait on somebody else to set those boundaries for you. You've got to set those That's own right. boundaries. And, and when you see that someone is crossing the line, you need to be able to say, listen, um, I set this boundary here for me. So if you don't mind, you know, I, I'd rather you not cross that line again. And now if that person takes an offense to that then that shows you that in a sense um that person is not thinking of your well-being that person is thinking of what only what she can get out of it they want and that's not a healthy that's right uh, relationship no. at all you know uh, when someone that's... doesn't respect your boundaries and are con and they're constantly crossing that that line there, there, there's something wrong there, and you need to do That's what you a red need to do to right keep there. that peace. That is a huge red flag right yeah. there. And that's when you, the yeah. person who are setting the boundary, has to say, okay, if this happen again, there's consequences. Simple. If it happen mm -hmm. again, because I explained it to you, don't get offended. It's not for you. It's for my own sanity. It's for my own safety. It's for my own well-being, but if it happens again, then that's just the consequences. And then you lay out some consequences. Now, earlier on, Miss Liz was saying the boundaries depends if it's a male or a female. If you'll give a second chance, mm -hmm. if it's a male, it depends on what. There's no second chance at all. Mm -hmm. If it's a female and you give a second chance, it depends on what it is. But there are second chances, yes, if you cross it, but you have mm -hmm. to pull the line. You have to say, this is it. This is the consequences. You know, then we could no longer be friends. You know, you could no longer have access to X, Y, Z and stuff like that and put the boundaries down because everything in life, there should be boundaries. Mm -hmm. In everything in life, then, then the Absolutely. whole world would be a wreck. That's why we have stop sign. That's why we have police. Mm -hmm. They're the boundaries. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's yeah. why we have things where yeah. we could, you know, close the door. That's the boundaries. Close the windows. That's boundaries. Yeah, you know, so but, but let's in life, just we say, have but let's just say, Jan, that um, the person watching us is in a friendship, right? And mm -hmm. um, and they're weary by that friendship because they're in a friendship where they feel that it's one sided, and um, the so called friend is very needy for attention, very needy uh, for always having uh, to. They're always needy for a word. And let's just say that you've, this person has tried to set the boundary. They, they tried to have a talk with this so-called friend and they don't see that it's going anywhere. They, 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 they talk to the person and they, they, they end the conversation more frustrated than when they began the conversation, right? What does mm -hmm. a person do when they're in a place, right, Jan, that the, their, their so-called friend is so needy for attention that it saps because it really does sap the energy out of yes, the other person. What does that person mm -hmm. do uh, where she doesn't want to offend, but she's tried talking to this person multiple times and the person just doesn't get it. You know, 
the only thing left is to put like a big neon sign and you know put it in front of their home so they can read it at night but they they just don't get it and it's frustrating for the other person what does that well, person if it, do well if it comes down to that that's what you have to do but first i would say if you, if i talk and i explain to you and you still don't get it then you for your own sanity for your own well-being because it's like a john they said a drowning man catch at a straw that mm. person is actually drowning so if you're the closest straw to it she's gonna pull he or she will keep pulling you down so you have to just make up your mind to distance mm. yourself you have to and that's the that's the that's the, the consequences right there i mm. speak i explain and you're not listening i have to distance myself because this is now it's coming over into my yard it's now affecting me it's now making me stressful it's now making me tired it's now making me emotionally drained so then you have to save yourself no one can save you but you so you have to just walk away literally yeah. walk away that's a huge red flag that's a huge red flag you have to walk away you have to save you yeah you love her but you love yeah, her in this enough to save yourself yeah yeah, and Miss Janet, someone who puts that much emphasis on I need you to be there all the time, you, you know, who craves all that attention, that's in the spiritual realm. I mean, think about how dangerous that is because you're not going to yes. be able to fight that person's battles for them. You're not going to mm -hmm. be able to sustain them the way that the Holy Spirit sustains, the way that God sustains. Correct. So if that person makes you their everything and you start to feel the burn, the the you know, the burden of having to carry that person and that person is always so needy for attention, uh, you're where I I look at it like I'd actually be doing a disservice to that person by continue on feeding that neediness. Yeah. And, you know, I, yeah. I've been in a few situations where I've had very needy friends and it sapped every bit of energy out of me. And the minute that I decided to step back and, and start distancing myself, that's when the real ugly comes out, right? Because that's when people start to retaliate. Mm. They start to really mm -hmm. show their true colors. You know, they start to give you the guilt trip. Then if that doesn't work, then they start to talk bad about you, how bad of a friend you are, because you're never there for them when they need you. And it's all about me, 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 and me. And that that is dangerous. It's dangerous spiritually. It's extremely dangerous emotionally it's draining and yes, dangerous it for the person that has to deal with it and mm -hmm. honestly you have to come to a point in your life where if it's really sapping that much energy out of you it's kind of like i love you i'm gonna pray for you from a distance but yeah. this is my boundary right now you you can't yeah. cross it anymore you can't come yeah. over to this side anymore mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you know you have we have to do what we have to do to keep peace inside our homes inside yeah. our and, hearts and, inside our minds and keep your sanity just your just yourself because Absolutely. if you fall apart then you know your whole house is gonna fall apart and then all the pressure is coming from the oh, outside yeah. and it's and it's coming to you and then you're bringing it into the home and then that's chaos right there. You know, you have to set the, the line, put, yeah. draw the line and say, that's it. You know, I can't, I can't talk to you as long as I used to talk to you. Um, Thursday is not a good day for me to talk. I know we used to hang out on Thursday, but now I have to do something with my kid or I have to do something with my home and, and just try to separate yourself, you know, and at the same time pray because that person really need the Holy Spirit, really need the Holy Spirit. You Absolutely. can't be so, um, you can't be so hungry or so needy. That's emotionally imbalanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know you oh, have absolutely. to uh, when you're when you're on the receiving end of that needy friendship, uh, you really have to know who you are in, in yes. God because yes. when you begin oh, to draw the line and really cut ties, guilt mm. that guilt trip will fall on mm -hmm. you. Where if you don't know who you are in Christ, you're going to easily fall into that and say, oh, I'm not being a good friend. I got to reach out. Oh, I'm not, you know, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. when you are in a friendship, ladies, where you begin no. to lose yourself in order yeah, to keep no, but... a friendship, something is yeah, terribly no. wrong. Something is terribly Absolutely. wrong. And, you know, and when you Absolutely. are in a friendship, you know, because, um, you know, you have, we all have different friends. We have, uh, 
friends in church. We have friends uh, that we grew up with. We have friends that are from the world. We have, we have friends. But when you in a friendship, for example, where the person is super spiritual, you know, spiritual Susie, you know, and um, you can't have a down to earth conversation without that person making you feel like you have to do more. You've got to be more. There's a difference between mm. a friend pushing you to better yourself and a friend that is pushing you to a guilt line where you feel like nothing that you're doing is ever enough. That's a very toxic mm. relationship, friendship. And that's a friendship that you need to really pray and ask God direction. And when he gives you the scissors to cut ties, you need to cut ties without thinking twice. You got to be yeah. that Peter that walks around with the scissors and just yep. snip, 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 snip. snip. <laughs> Listen, yes, I, I look at it this because... way. I'm like my own worst <laughs> critic. I'm like my own worst critic. I already have enough trouble dealing with my own self when I know that I should have done something a certain way and not the other and dealing with my own guilt rather than to have someone else add on to that. Now, having said that, I do appreciate a friend that's transparent that can come to me and say, hey, Claudia, I think you overstepped your boundaries or, you know, you, you shouldn't have behaved that way or you shouldn't have said that. I, I love that. But th that's different from someone uh, giving you the guilt trip that you're not spiritual enough, that you're not good enough, that you're not praying enough, that you're not going to church enough, that you're not, you know, enough, enough, yeah. enough, enough, enough. Yeah, I already have myself to deal with, which is a whole lot of work. Uh, never mind to have someone to add on to that 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 side of it. Yeah, and, and, so and I like people that are transparent. I love people that are transparent. When it sounds too good to be true, it usually is too good to be true. I love people that are flawed, that love God, um, but they're not scared to 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 let people know. Listen, this is who I am. You know, I'm a flawed woman of God, I, I, I need help in this, I need help in that. But there's tra transparency. When there's people that are always making you feel like you're not stepping up enough as, as a Christian or as a woman of God, but you know, that, that there's always, I don't know, when you really get to know yeah. the person, you see that and you know, and, and, there's and you a know, facade Claudia, that they're um, putting up. And you know that we can't, we can't confuse transparency with uh, judgment uh, because sometimes mm -hmm. you have friendships, you're in a friendship where uh, the, the person supposedly is transparent, but in reality, they're just being judgmental and they're using that transparency line as a, as a cover up. You know, I'm just being honest with you. I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. No, in reality, mm. what you're doing is you're judge, you're prejudging me and you're throwing a scripture in to make mm -hmm. yourself look more yeah. spiritual that kind of that's very toxic mm -hmm. and you again you need to pray about it you need to say god show me this relationship right here i know jen you're about to say something go ahead jen <laughs> but transparency <laughs> is not to tell me what i should do yes transparency is to tell me what's going Absolutely. on with you Mm -hmm. it's not it's not mm -hmm. to say that's oh, right oh i'm just being i'm just telling you the truth i'm mm -hmm. just being honest with you no that's not transparency that's judgmental yes transparency is to yeah. say listen girl today in the supermarket i flipped I, I was i was doing good i prayed this morning i went through the whole ephesians <laughs> 6 i put the whole armor on but guess what girl the cashier she get on i flip please pray for me tonight that's transparency am i right yeah, that's, that's right. That's yeah. right. Let me see that's what day of the week did I do that on? I know I did that one day last then week. Then that's transparency. <laughs> that's transparency. Oh, yeah. But, but when you're, you're gonna tell me, you're when you're gonna say, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just being, you know, I read this last night, and this is just confirmation to what's going on. You know, this is what you should do. That's judgmental. That's judgmental. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes, sorry, yeah, that's judgmental. Yeah. When, when it always comes down to the end of the conversation, uh, their spirituality is always high above yours. Yeah. It's there's yeah. a problem with that kind of friendship right there. Yeah. You know? But listen, friendships yeah. are just and, and I think just and I, imperfect people. 
right? Imperfect people that just love each other, yes, loyal yeah. to each other, and they look out for each mm -hmm. other. That's pretty much That's what it. it is. That's what it is. That's just right. down to earth people who, you know, can just, <laughs> you know, be transparent and, 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 and feel like I, I can be transparent. Like I can be transparent with Jan and I know that Jan ain't going to judge me. I know that Jan ain't going to say, oh, my bishop wife, you did that. Oh, my goodness. You really? <laughs> you want to see my book? <laughs> and then I'll be like, hey, Jan, bishop wife, you did that. What's wrong with you? You want to see my book? You don't want to see my book. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my lord. But um it's, it's it's loyalty, it's 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 an honest openness with each other. It's what we're doing now, it's just laughing, it's just being real. As we said, this is real talk, it's just being That's real. That's right. Yeah. Just being real. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh my friends, my friends, there is you so said much it, more. Janet. It's all about being real. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. being real. And, and and it's so freeing. It is so freeing when you yes, are it in is. a friendship yes, where you is. can just be yourself and just yourself. not have to worry about where am I going to step on my, oh, look at that, you know, eggshell mm -hmm. here, eggshell there, you know, it's mm -hmm. just freeing. And this, in, 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 in both parties grow. Yeah. They grow. Real friendships grow. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there, there's just so much more, so much more, so much more to uh, talk about, but we've, we've gone over the, the, the mark of the hour um but um i just pray that this this word here today really really blessed you uh word about friendship if you find yourself in a so-called friendship and you feel that every time you come in connection with this person um you just feel like something is just not right something is just then listen to that gut feeling pray about it Ask God to show you, what do I need to do, Lord? What is it about this relationship that's just not leaving me okay? You know, show me what it is. You know, and when God, and God may show you, God may show you, listen, all I want you to do is just pray for her. She's going through something. Or maybe God may show you, listen, this season is over. You need to be okay with this season being over and move on. You know, if you pray, God will answer. If you pray, God will, God will show you what you need to do, you know, but what you cannot do and what you cannot be okay with is losing yourself in the midst of this so-called friendship. You know, uh, there are so, so many different types and levels of friendships. You know, Kira, in one of her comments, she wrote that there are different, um, I can't see it now, but she wrote something about there are different circles and how true that is. There, there, there are there are different circles. There are different levels of friendships, and just because one person is not at a certain level doesn't make that person less important than the one who is at that certain level. You know, mm. and it's all about maturity. Like Jan said, you know, it's all about maturity. It's all about growing in that friendship. And for you to be, I just want you, to, all of us here, to remember: for us to have a friend, we need to first be a friend. Mm -hmm. We need to be a friend first. You give and you receive. You know, you, you give of yourself and, and, and you will receive the same. If you, but you may say, well, all the, that's the problem. I, I give and I give and I don't receive. You know what? Sometimes you may be depositing into someone's life and you may not withdraw from that specific person. But God will have someone else a little bit down the line where you will be able to withdraw. Because every deposit that you make, you're always entitled to make a withdrawal. You know, so we just pray, ladies. I just want to thank you for being on here today, from connecting from your homes today. Uh, we were unable to do what we had planned, but uh, maybe the next program we'll be able to do what we planned. We're going to leave it as a surprise for the ladies. Um, but I want to thank you for coming on. I want to thank you for opening up and talking about friendships, talking about the, the different friendships of the Bible. And there's so much more friendships uh friendship relationships that the bible talks about you know and if uh we get into it and we you know, practice it more and read on it more and meditate on it more there's so much more that god can reveal to us so i want to just thank you jan from home thank you, thank Liz, you Claudia, for being home. here and thank you all that connected as well we pray that this word here blessed you today and we pray that uh it helped you uh, it really, really helped you differentiate 
between different levels of friendships and what friendship really means from a biblical perspective. All right. So God bless you all. And we'll see you again in two weeks in your program, Real Talk. God bless you. Bye, Bye, ladies. Bye.